people, uh, nobody getting any revenue because this is not the nobody knows it's being run by the supermarkets. And yeah, corporations, yeah, it's not it's, it's and crazy. Reform, and, and, and in Australia, just to, to let people know, in Australia we have a terrible problem with with gambling, as I'm sure you, you you're aware. Gambling is a major issue, and it's done through poker machines, and the and the largest majority owners of poker machines are the leading supermarket chain. Woolworths is the largest owner in Australia of poker machines. So it's uh, it really is evil, but um, they're not being touched. Look, I think one of the uh, one of the one of the things in in a, and if I just talk about Australia, uh, and it's a broader issue in terms of indigenous communities because I think this is where we're getting into just to talk for a quick moment but it applies to all communities but particularly to indigenous communities indigenous communities are in Australia for example a very very sensitive issue for the present system and the reason why is that people may not realize this that if you want to claim occupation under the Roman system I mean, occupation is all important under the Roman system because if you don't have occupation then effectively you're considered an invading force and international law puts a lot of restrictions under you so to actually occupy the land to conquer a people you have to do the following you either have to sign a treaty people think treaties are about protecting rights that's complete rubbish complete and utter rubbish never ever sign a treaty a treaty is one way okay because under a treaty you're basically a, a, a recognizing what a treaty does is not what's said, said in a treaty it's the fact that a treaty belongs to a body of law that tells you then that you're nothing so whenever any indigenous group signed a treaty it wasn't what they offered in the treaty it was the fact that the treaty belongs to the Roman system of law you follow so you either sign a treaty or you have a battle now if you don't have any set battles that you lose uh, or the third one is genocide which is basically you kill everybody okay so you got to either kill every single person like they did in Tasmania or you have to have a treaty or the third is you actually have to have a battle you need to have a war now if you don't have a war you don't have a treaty and you haven't killed everybody then you actually don't occupy the land and that is the present legal position in Australia so what they need to do and what they've been doing with the indigenous people is is the classic game of divide and conquer in Australia and they're doing it everywhere but they are doing it here where they appoint people as superstars pay them lots of money so that they become egos that control groups in others they depress and and uh, abuse but they keep everyone separate so that no one realizes the precarious legal position in this country for example that the Roman system is in okay yep so uh, <laughs> um, well this is a bit of a tricky one because uh, all those mobs will hear this so they will know. And well, they they know already. I don't I don't have a problem with that. They know who I am. That's fine. Well, 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 so, well. That that may be right, but in, in actual fact, in effect, the people who are being shot at, who are targeted, the people who the system has been implemented to, on, upon. Yep. 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 No idea who you are. No idea who you are. No. Right. Or or the movement of of people in restoration of law. Which is what yep. all these people who are family people on the ground are all about: yep. restoration of community, restoration of law, equity mm -hmm. for the young, equity for the old. They've got no idea, <laughs> and it's exactly what you say about the 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 the, the um, system of departmentalisation, where, where nobody mm -hmm. knows what's going next door. The left hand doesn't have any clue what the right hand's doing. But yep. uh, yeah, so well, if, but if they were to if they were to be able to sit together as a group. Uh, in in effect, would, 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 would that would that give them ability to act immediately? Yes, it'd be all over. It'd be all over. But they they won't come together. The, the, the three things that they won't come together on, and, and it's important. And I think it's an important subject because it mirrors 
ever in the world. When I've spoken to some amazing fellows in uh, the States that are working with the nations and the peoples in the States, uh, what, what's bringing people together is not the money or even the politics, it's the spirit. What I mean by that is is the fact that they diminish the spiritual integrity of the fact that the tribes, if you use the word in Australia, the tribes did meet at historic moments and did communicate. So there was an overarching spiritual hierarchy. If, if you want to call it a religion, there was a unity of cultures there. And what they've diminished is that. Now, that's the only thing that brings people together when you talk at that level. At politics, they get people voting all different ways. At money, well, you know with money. I mean, getting people to come together because of money is, is impossible. So if you can get to people to come together on that, on the spiritual side, it's all over. Oh, and mate, they don't have any money. And their idea yeah. of equity is that there's no... I mean, if I was to walk down there with a ton of gold, it would be no use to them because I probably wouldn't be sure. able to spend most of places. Anyway, they, they've got no... Mm. They've got no uh, their original concept is equity in spirit. They, they have a, a complicit understanding that there's no... You can never, ever weigh equity in gold or money. And the 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 blood of if, if you like the ancestors or the martyrs mm -hmm. can never yep. ever ever be laid against any other physical form that we can use as a measurement because we can never say that one the two farmers living next door to each other one farmer has green pastures the other one's got rocks well both of them mm -hmm. are producing milk but who are we to say this bloke his whole family it's cost him their whole lives to produce milk the bloke next door just sits back on his porch and the cows eat green mm. past, cost them nothing to do. It can never be weighed. That's why I believe, and from what I've listened to what you're saying, in all the scriptures, he attacked the money changes because you can't, you can't say this bloke's milk's worth $5. And so only those people understand their equity, and so do the mm. people who put them in trade. So they, these people understand equity completely. They just don't understand how to translate it into a way or put it into the language that the people who are administering this authority over them are listening to. Yeah, that's simply well, all it is. They, they got all well, they thing, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the, the reality in Australia is, and it will be a reality in many places, the reality in Australia is when the tribes come together because of people like you and others that help the Indigenous communities connect together, when that comes together and the body of work validates what we're saying, but comes from the point of view of being stewards and shows that there's a better way. I mean, in Australia at the moment, we have utter madness. I mean, no one can say that Australia is administered properly. It's not. It's administered like countries like any around the world. No one can say that Obama is administering America properly. So I mean, if they were doing their job properly, it would be, I think, a very difficult task to, to call the system to account. But it's not that they're running it properly. They're running it to the ground. So when that happens, look, I, I think it's going to be just a matter of, of power, force, um, that will, will make the change. I don't think you will find that these people listen to reason, to logic. Certainly that hasn't been the case so far. Look, I'm going to, Darwin, I know you've raised some questions there. Uh, I know we may not have covered them all. But look, thanks so much for what you said. I hope I answered enough tonight. And if there's other questions, please feel free to follow up. So thanks very much. Yes, uh, thank you, Darwin. We're going to move on to some other uh, questions. Is that South Minnesota on the phone? Yes. Hi, Terry. Hi. Paul. Hello, Paul. Yeah. Uh, Frank is next. Is is that uh, that's the end of the call then? No, 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 no. no, no. We're, 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 no we're, oh, you're okay. you're online. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Frank. Um, uh, you mentioned earlier. You talked about. Uh, the auctioneers, okay, and then mm -hmm. making the offer prior to before he uses his gavel, okay. Mm -hmm. um, you object to what he's what he's uh, what the sentence is going to be, and okay. Now I understand that uh, I, I understand that, um, uh, and I know the allocution is in process that it's being worked on. But can you just 
give me a brief overview of how that works? Um, it's the elocution my, component or the auction? Uh, the elocution. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's that's that follows after the the auction. Uh, yes. And the offer and the counter offer. Um, can you just describe it now, again? I, I understand that you're still in progress working with the, you know, putting it together. Absolutely. Um, I've um, I, I, I've just read briefly that it's just it's 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 your chance to to reoffer evidence that you've submitted to the court. Yeah, there's two there's two spellings of elocution. If you go and look at uh, and blacks, what you'll find is that elocution uh, originally comes from uh, the Latin word uh, elocutio, so E L O C U T I O, and uh, it it was considered um, in the ancient traditions of rhetoric to be one of the key elements of rhetoric. It actually dates back all the way to um, uh, to the Roman system as a as a as an extremely important element. It was also defined as ad locutio or ad locutio. And it was an address by a general or even the emperor to his army um, as a, a reason. So it was a formal speech and it was a right to a formal speech before uh, an act, before effectively uh, someone faced uh, death. So it was then transposed in the Anglo-Saxon system as a right, not as a privilege, but as a right, that any man or woman that had been convicted had the right to speak to their sentence. So they'd gone through the whole process, they'd been found guilty by their peers, a, a sentence had been bestowed on them, they had the right, and this, uh, if you want to look at uh, the good old public notice system of Hollywood, you'll find in film after film, I know you're talking about film, you say, why are you talking about film? What's film got to do with it? But it is their system of public notice that you hear this, the, the condemned man's last words. And that's exactly what elocution is. Elocution is the right of the condemned man to speak their last words. Now, Blacks formalized it in its second uh, edition to the definition that effectively, let me have a look at this, uh, that effectively said in criminal procedure when a prisoner is convicted, so the sentence has been rendered, so the judgment, the auction has been finished, um, the court is bound uh, to demand of him what he has to say as to why the court should not proceed to judgment against him. Now, they've, they've, what they've done is they've, um, they've actually now made it a, uh, a process that occurs uh, before the judgment uh, is, is rendered. So <clears throat> what we're looking at doing is the timing. And there's a fellow by the name of Greg Pappas that has um, had some experience in seeing elocution being performed and whether it in fact is from the time of the uh, conviction uh, before the sentence or is following the sentence. Um, but the process of elocution remains on the record and being on the record, it gives an opportunity for those that have been railroaded through the system to go back through all evidence that was denied, all objections that were denied to the very principles that you were brought forward. So if you, for example, did not uh, consent to the plea or did not consent to the jurisdiction, if you had presented to the court that you accepted the oath, that you were, you were going to the court on the agreement of the oath of the judge, if you um, had evidence to present that uh, proved that you are not under the jurisdiction because you're a live born record, then the elocution being the uh, vocal uh, opportunity gives you the opportunity to represent that evidence and all evidence is put into uh, the record. <clears throat> the reason that I'm holding back on getting too far into elocution at this point 
is that their system 